Hi, I'm John Felt, and this is a Blue Water Outlook briefing for Tropical Storm Isaac. Uh, let's take a look at looking at a visible satellite picture here. Uh, if you look at the bumpy clouds, uh, those are pushing now into South Florida. Um, that's really picking up the rain in that area as that rotates from east to west. Um, it would be interesting to see if this continues to move around the circulation, um, if we begin to get a tighter circulation as we go through the afternoon. Just looking at this here, the way the convection is beginning to increase and it looks like we're getting some better organization. Um, but we'll see as we go through the afternoon. Here's the rain over the uh, south part of the state of Florida, uh, Miami and uh, the Everglades area, as well as the Keys. It's really picked up. That's streaming in directly from the Atlantic now into Miami, and that is getting tremendous amounts of rain um, with this type of flow, and it'll continue throughout the day. So at least for the immediate future, the hydrologic aspects for flooding will be over South Florida. Uh, this area really doesn't have many traditional rivers, so what we'd expect here is urban flooding in the Miami, Fort Lauderdale metro area, as well as extensive ponding and pooling of water over that area. So here's the latest track from the Hurricane Center, and as you probably are aware of, it's been trending to the left or to the west over the last 24 hours or so. And I think that's the big forecast challenge right now is how far west it's going to go. Further west it goes, look how far it is now from Tampa, uh, and even though there are tropical storm warnings in effect because of the wind field, uh, the hydrologic impacts will probably be reduced a bit as the rain uh, pulls offshore into the Gulf of Mexico. The next uh, area we will be, have concern for will be inland once it moves um, onshore. Uh, Blue Water Outlook focuses on the hydro aspects of this event, but uh, I wanted to put the wind uh, field up here so you can see that the area in yellow, significant uh, winds uh, across much of the state of Florida, as well as once it moves inland over parts of Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama. Okay, now this one makes it complex. It's a pretty simple diagram here. Uh, red is roughly the uh, current track that Isaac is forecast to take. And the two factors that are steering that, actually three, one is that area of high pressure um, off the east coast, uh, the uh, area where I have the circulation in green, and it's been moving along the south of that high. And originally, um, we thought that it might move north and hug that high. Uh, that's that dashed green line that it, a couple days ago and even as uh, recent as yesterday moved into parts of Alabama and Georgia. We thought that upper trough and that's that area in blue would pull it up to the north. Well now we see that it's moving more to the west and uh, the thought is that that trough will eventually interact with it and then tilt it more to the north and eventually towards maybe even the northeast. There is one other option here that I'm going to put into play, and that's if it does not interact with that trough or the trough goes through. In that case, we would even look at a further west progression, and that's that uh, dashed line, uh, green line, um, south of the red area, and that's an option. But right now, I think that red looks like the best option to go with right now, and uh, there will be some interaction with that trough. But that's what we'll be talking about over the next couple of days. Now the rainfall forecast, um, Hydrometeorological Prediction Center aligns that very closely with the track of the surface low. Um, and keep in mind the heaviest rain is usually along and to the right of the track, and that's why uh, it is you know to the right here. I think right now it, it might have a little bit um, more interaction with that upper trough bringing it into Georgia and the Carolinas. I suspect that that'll pull off to the west even more on the next update to this. Uh, but right now, this is the forecast. But again, the trend has been off to the west. And I wouldn't be surprised, especially the parts in uh, the Carolinas, be tilted more into Kentucky and Tennessee and definitely into Mississippi. And the whole structure pull off more to the west. And also tilt it more north than northeast. But here's a close-up of uh, other rivers that would be impacted by the latest uh, rainfall. Uh, keep in mind, I just said, I think this will be changing just like it has in the 24 hours. I think that the, the shift is more towards the west, and we'll see that later today. Um, here's an example of one of the models that uh, often does good with hurricanes. This is the American model or the GFS model. And look how far west the axis of heavy rain is with this. This is bringing it onshore close to New Orleans and then uh, being lifted north. And I've seen these tracks before. This is for heavy rain. This is not all that unusual, where initially we think it might affect the southeast U.S., and it pulls north. In this case, it would be pulling north as far as Arkansas into Missouri and into Illinois. So that's quite a bit different than what we thought uh, earlier a couple days ago over that heavy rain over the southeast U.S. Now, the 
The rainfall forecast, the official forecast, does not have this solution, but I did want to let you know that this is what one of the models is calling for. And if we look at the ensembles of that model, you do see that there's a fairly good alignment right now as it moves across the Gulf of Mexico. And if you look at that cluster, the southern cluster of um, models, um, that actually is a lot, sort of going with that green arrow I showed where we're mo moving more just due northwest and hardly any curving at all. And I don't think you could rule out a heavy rain or not, maybe not heavy rain, but a landfall even over Texas. Now that's a long shot right now, but again, that's the trend. The trend has been going in that direction. Okay, let's look at some of the river forecast points, and this is uh, the multi-model uh, output. This takes in five days of rainfall and puts it in uh, the model. And what we see here is that only some minor flooding now in Tampa, and that's what we'd expect as the rain has uh, pulled off some um, scattered minor flooding as most of the rain now is off to the west. But where it makes landfall, I think that is where the next uh, potential for more significant flooding other than South Florida today, and that's along the northwest Florida panhandle, parts of South Alabama, and parts of uh, Mississippi. So we'll keep an eye on that. Red is moderate flooding and, and purple is even major flooding. And whenever you have landfall of such a wet system like this, I think that's realistic. Now, whether it'll be in that spot further west, that's still to be seen. But I do think we will see some significant river flooding right near the, the coast uh, where Isaac moves inland. Now, it's always very complicated. Many of the talks I've given, I always talk about beneficial rainfall versus flooding type rains. And I think we'll see that as well. And we definitely could see... Um, Flooding type rainfall over parts of Louisiana, Mississippi, maybe parts of Alabama, northwest Florida. But then as that rain moves up further north, it's going to go over areas that needs at six inches or more of rain, like a giant sponge, and that's going to um, mitigate the flood risk in that area. I still think there could be some flooding. Um, when you have a tropical storm um, or a hurricane moving inland, even if there's a drought, you can still have some flooding. But for the most part, I think that's going to be a beneficial rain over those regions. So that's a quick update um, this Sunday, midday. I will be putting out another update tomorrow. If things change significantly, I'll be updating this uh, later tonight. If you have any questions at all on this, feel free to email me at info, I-N-F-O, at bluewateroutlook.com. Thank you.